All right, a bit of a diversion from the Van Kempe project in a way. So, okay, yesterday I picked uh, the crappiest uh, thermoelectric cooler I've ever seen in my life out of the trash. Uh, it's uh, made by some Italian company and actually assembled in it Italy, which is nice, I suppose. But the quality of this thing is just absolute trash. Uh, here's the original uh, container, which uh, looks kind of okay, it's made of decent quality plastic, but uh, the insulation is just that, one centimeter of styrofoam, and that's it. It's just pretty pathetic. And even less in the bottom, there's just no useful insulation at all going on and when I tried running it after repairing it uh, you, you'd actually get condensation on the outside uh, because it was getting so cold just <laughs> on the outside uh, so uh, I decided to not use that one and uh, instead I take one of these uh, thermal boxes which are quite popular around here which are made out of uh, a very thick styrofoam and these work great. Uh, you can basically fill these with ice in the morning and have them filled with ice in the evening with no active cooling at all. They, they just insulate so well. Local made in Finland, pretty great and they cost uh, two euros, literally. Uh, so, all I've done is well, I've done a few things actually. So, originally the fan in this thing uh, was this really stupid dual fan single motor thing. There it is. Uh, which is absolutely stupid, this thing. Uh, by some miracle, the original owners have actually run this thing for so long that the bearings in this thing are pretty much shot. It sounds, it sounds like a car engine when it's running. Uh, but yeah, it was unbalanced, it barely moved any air and it was just so loud. Incredibly, incredibly loud. Uh, so I just ripped that out uh, and uh, used some pretty standard brushless fans uh, to replace it. So this is uh, a 24 volt fan out of a laser copier, which is pretty, pretty silent, not super, but At 12 volts it's not bad and it moves a lot of air, it's actually quite large, it's pretty much that size. And uh, on the inside I used uh, a CPU cooler fan, this is from an Arctic Cooler Freezer 7 Pro I believe, uh, which I just had lying around, which has these nice little rubber grommet mounts uh, already on it, so it's uh, running very quiet, especially compared to the old one. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. I used a lot of duct tape to insulate the seal where the blue plastic meets the styrofoam and I used some scrap styrofoam from the cutout to actually insulate this better because uh, even though this blue part looks pretty thick, it's just air in it. It has a little styrofoam piece but there's barely any actual insulation in it. Uh, and I'm test running it now and it's been on for a little while. And well, we're already starting to build a bit of cool. Got a couple of water bottles in it just for testing. And that's about it. Uh, I originally wasn't going to. Oh, yeah, I added a power button because it didn't have any. The original fault in this thing also was just that the uh, cigarette lighter connector on it was uh, corroded and broken. I just connected power after cutting that off and it worked great. And granted, it's very simple, it's just got a single 40 watt Peltier device and uh, it did come with this horrible cheapo uh, 230 volt uh, uh, power supply which I just ripped out because... Yeah, ugh. And uh, beyond that it was just connected straight Peltier and fan across the 12 volt rail. So, yeah, no, no smart, no thermostat, no power control, no nothing. Anyway, I wasn't originally planning to take any kind of cooler with me at all, uh, because I can survive just fine on dry foods and canned stuff, 
Uh, but I figured this thing does uh, put out about 50 watts of heat here, a bit more when it's warm inside. And uh, that could provide, I'm thinking I could be entirely ignorant of the uh, amount of thermal leakage of the actual van, but I'm figuring this could give a slight amount of boost heating in the night time, where it might get ever so slightly, you know, well, cold and uncomfortable. So I figured my plan is to just run this during the night and uh, always have it like a steady supply of water in it uh, and uh, let it sit over day. And uh, since it's running in night when it's cold, there's going to be a lower heatsink temperature. The peltier is going to be able to cool it uh, about 10 to 20 degrees cooler uh, than uh, it would in the day when it's uh, considerably warmer. And uh, yeah, well, I guess we'll see how that plan pans out. I mean, if I hold my hand here, there's, I mean, it's not super hot air coming through, but it's, it's warm. You know, that, that's 50 watts being dissipated. It's drawing 3.77 amps at 12 volts. So, you know, leave this running in the little tiny van cabin, and I'm willing to bet that this is going to make a difference. I would be very, very surprised if it did not make a difference in uh, the comfort of the van. If it's cold anyway, but I guess uh, only time will tell. It's going to have to fight against the ventilation, so it's going to have a tough time, but uh, the way I'm considering mating it is going to make it run pretty efficiently, I think, as far as heating is concerned. Uh, thermal performance of this thing, it seems to have a pretty shit pelted device in it. Uh, the best I've managed before assembling it, it completely was about 8-9 degrees inside uh, in normal 20 ish degrees Celsius uh, ambient, so eh, not not good by any stretch of your imagination, you'd barely dare have any meat in it, but that's a, little, that's a water cooler, I mean, it could do, it's better than nothing, and I've managed to arrange the van to accommodate it quite nicely underneath the bed, so, ah, yeah, just wanted to share that, and since it's a Peltier device and incredibly inefficient, I've named it thereafter. Alright, so I tested this thing tonight and it performed, well, it worked, but kind of not perfectly. So I knew a place where I could get a new tech element for this. Uh, this is a 60 watt compared to a 40 watt, which for some of it's not going to make a huge difference. And I've now obviously disassembled this and yeah, the thermal stuff they've used isn't doesn't seem to be a very high class there's no real thermal compound at all just these little crushing pads on uh, both heat sinks and you can clearly see how there's actually been water between the uh, tech and the uh, heat sink so i'm just gonna uh, strip this one out but this one in there instead and hope it gets better and this is of course my new fan just to Better look at it, seems to be a very high grade fan. Well, it's pretty much perfectly across this heatsink. There we go, that's more like it. Ah, there we go, new tech is in. It's working great. Heating is getting hot on this side, cold underneath. And it is using pretty much exactly the same amount of power. We're just sitting at just shy of uh, 4 amps on the other one as well. So, this seems to be a very suitable replacement. Uh, how, however much better the performance is going to get, I uh, don't uh, speculate, but, you know, this this thing's... I'm not certain how these age, but, yeah, this thing's probably seen better days. It is a bit thicker of a new one, though. Not sure how much of a difference that's going to make. But, yeah, all in all, it's still a thermoelectric cooler, so probably not going to be very good either, either way ever and there we go all back together as if nothing ever happened except I had a chance to fill this cavity up with a bit extra insulation and added a bit more to this part as well so we should be having an all-round win going on here and yes indeed uh, I've got one temperature sensor in the box and one outside and uh, we've got a 8 degrees inside and 17 on the outside, so that's a 9 degree drop. And that is uh, way better than what I ever saw with the other one. 
uh, after it had been on for an entire night we had uh, 8 degrees uh, between the inside and the outside so this is definitely a step up in performance it's just been on for like an hour of the most so yeah it's confirmed the old Pelti was somehow not operating entirely perfectly and now it's been sitting overnight and look at that we have well over 10 degrees of thermal drop we're approaching 15 that's not bad at all so I've got a couple of bottles in this thing so let's see what a kind of a fluid temperature we've got well, that's chilly these were pretty much room temp when I put them in there so it's taken about a day to chill these so let's see oh yeah we've definitely got the same temperature of the liquid as we do in the air so that's excellent it's managed to pump out all the temperature that was stored in these uh, two bottles and a couple of jars of uh, jam there there you go it's definitely working. Perhaps it's even viable.